Okay, so I will present to you the uh, European Innovation Council. So as you can see, this is uh, the flagship initiative of the European Union that uh, has 10 billion euros of funding for the period 21-27. And uh, we are trying basically to be uh, very innovator-centric, very innovator-friendly, and to invest in uh, the deep tech innovations that are emerging from the ecosystem across the European Union and a number of uh, associated countries to the program that are basically around the uh, European Union. We cooperate uh, widely with the European innovation ecosystem, in particular of innovations like uh, the European Institute for Technology and Innovation, the EIT. Uh, and uh, you can find the information about the calls that are mentioned here on, uh, at the end. But if you want to find information on how to access the money, you just type EIC call and uh, you will Google that and you will find the latest information that is available on it. So as you can see, we are part of uh, Horizon Europe, uh, which is the flagship program for supporting research and innovation across the European Union. And uh, we are uh, spending, as I said, about 10 billion euros uh, for implementing that priority. So we are focusing on deep tech, on breakthrough innovation, market creating innovation, where Europe has the biggest difficulties in order to try to actually compete with the other parts of the world, mostly the US and Asia, in particular China. It's a, it's a bottom-up operation, bottom-up program in order, basically any innovation is left to uh, the innovators to determine but uh, we can complement that with a number of challenges which are priorities that are defined in every work program, priorities that are important, uh, politically speaking, for the European Union, such as, for example, after the pandemic, uh, health, uh, what happened, of course, in terms of uh, reshoring a number of manufacturing possibilities uh, across Europe or areas like uh, quantum or blockchain and so on that are very important for the future of the European Union. We uh, not only provide funding, but we provide, of course, a, a range of uh, business acceleration services to companies in order to help them plug the holes in the development of their companies, in particular, uh, when they are looking at a number of soft skills, uh, mentoring, coaching, and so on, in order to increase their capacity to attract uh, funding or to grow their company quicker. We uh, do this through three funding instruments that you see here. The Pathfinder, which is uh, basically uh, the idea to the proof of concept transition that allow you to take the proof of concept and uh, basically transform it into a business proposition in the form of a company. And the Accelerator, which is only for startup and SMEs and where we provide support, not only in grant money, but also uh, in equity money where we combine it uh, uh, up to 2.5 million in grant and up to 15 million euros uh, in equity. This, of course, is uh, the flagship initiative, the flagship uh, funding instrument that we have. The other ones are just providing more traditionally only grant money, and they do that, of course, to a range of participants that are mostly uh, innovations that are produced out of universities, for example, in cooperation with uh, um, uh, corporates, uh, startups, uh, and also uh, a number of other uh, participants like uh, research institutes. So uh, for the year 2022, just to put the spotlight a bit on what we do, we have a budget of uh, 1.1 billion euros, of which uh, for the accelerator, uh, where uh, the next calls, you have the deadlines that are indicated here. So the one of the 20 Mar 23rd of March is, of course, behind us. Next one is the 15th of June. And the 5th of October is the one that will close this. So what are we looking for? We are looking for uh, companies that are willing to start the scale-up process with high-impact innovation uh, and have the, pot the potential to create new markets or disrupt the ex existing one. Uh, we usually tend to concentrate on the deep tech area because, of course, this is where the money we provide is the most relevant. I mean, if you have an innovation in other areas that are more where the money available in Europe, in particular from the private sector, is more plentiful, the added value we can add will be uh, more uh, limited. 
And of course, this, uh, this deep tech innovation usually require a lot of patient capital to address the risk profile of the type of technologies they are developing over time. And this is where, of course, we are more relevant in order to bridge towards the private sector, which at the end of the day, if your innovation is successful, will be the one that will carry you through the different stages of your scale-up process. So here are the different options that you can apply for. So the central option, like I said, is blended finance, where we provide up to 2.5 million grant money and uh, equity from half a million to 15 million. But you can also apply to uh, grant first or grant only. In other words, not apply for equity in the first instance uh, under certain conditions. The idea here is that maybe your level of development of your company and of the innovation that you have may not require yet to apply for equity and that is okay as long as of course you evidence it during uh, the application process and that of course will be evaluated. Um, the investment component uh, will be in the form of equity. We may transitionally give you a, a quasi equity meaning a convertible which is a kind of a loan that will convert later at the next financing round we will keep the ownership in your company at a very low level. On average, it's about 7% today in our interventions. We don't invest, uh, we don't take very, very big ownership stakes in companies, but we can go up to 25% depending, of course, of the company. And we apply the patient capital uh, approach, which means that we are ready to stay with our uh, stake uh, for a period of time that is usually exceeds what private VCs do over a period of seven to 10 years. Of course, that depends on whether uh, the company evolves, uh, on the company's evolution. If the company evolves faster than that, we'll be, of course, happy to exit quicker. And if we exit quicker, of course, we'll use the money that we'll recover to invest into other innovations, to finance other companies across Europe. Uh, the grant component is covering up to 70% of uh, the R&D costs that your company is still uh, experiencing. And of course, this normally is being completed within a two year period. You can also uh, come to us and apply if you have only, you're only interested in getting the equity which is the investment only uh, option. If you're already at a level of development in which you don't need any grant to uh, pay for a number of uh, testing or uh, I would say uh, uh, R&D costs that are still there. And uh, like I said, you can apply for the possibility offered by uh, the grant only or the grant first if uh, you're too early stage for doing so. And if you have, in particular, in the case of Grand First, the possibility of, uh, inv of doing the scale-up process with uh, your own money or the money of investors uh, later on, and you don't need the money of uh, the EIC to do that. We uh, are, uh, under certain conditions, can go above 15 million, in particular in areas that are of uh, strategic importance for the European Union to develop its strategic autonomy. Uh, there will be more frequent cut-off cut dates as of next year. This year we have only three, probably next year we'll have uh, four. And uh, you, of course, if you fail during one uh, cut-off, you can resubmit sometimes under certain conditions and we have uh, a system by which you will learn from uh, the report that you get from the evaluators the reason for which you have failed, which will allow you to reflect upon it and prepare a better uh, proposal next time. We have a, a priority, of course, to help in particular women-led companies. Uh, the idea, I mean, in particularly in the Baltic states that are, uh, I would say, a bit different from the rest of Europe where you have a very high level of uh, women-led uh, companies, in particular in the deep tech area, which is particularly advantageous there. But of course, at the end of the day, the companies are being selected only on its own merits, but we have a dedicated uh, target to try to increase the number of women-led companies that uh, we are selecting. If you uh, are selected as a very good company, but you don't get the funding because we have a limited budget, of course, at every cutoff, you'll get a seal of excellence. And uh, that with that seal of excellence, you can ask your national authorities or regional authorities, depending on the size of your country, 
to then uh, try to gain finance your uh, initiative, your uh, company, uh, of course, based on the rules that apply at national level. And that feature usually is quite uh, well appreciated because since we run a European uh, program that is very competitive, the uh, paper that you get, this uh, label of excellence that you get is of course very valuable to try uh, to get it uh, from uh, the national level. Uh, we have a fast track for those that have been uh, working within the kicks of the European, of the EIT. Those uh, that are there can uh, have a fast track. The EIT kicks will provide us uh, this year with a number of companies that they have pre-selected. So I will engage for those of you that uh, are in contact with the EIT kicks, of course, to uh, use that uh, channel as well, because that can improve considerably your uh, possibility of uh, being selected. Last year, 46 of the 164 companies that we have selected uh, when, were companies that were coming from the EIT, so about 28% of them. So uh, being part of the EIT is not a guarantee of success, but allow you to improve very much the possibilities offered there. Um, we have an open call that is open to all innovations, independently of what you want uh, or what you propose, and a challenge call, which is uh, uh, explained here. If you have in particular innovations that are in the open strategic autonomy area or uh, technologies fit for 55, meaning mostly related to the Green Deal and everything, the, all the technologies that are helping Europe address the climate change challenge and uh, to reach cl uh, climate neutrality by 2050. So what will you go through through the evaluation step? First of all, uh, we will ask you to tell us your story and to su submit a short application that will be evaluated. And uh, if it's evaluated positively and we consider that the maturity of your idea is the right one for continuing the process, then we will allow you uh, a coach that uh, will help you uh, improve your proposal and uh, will uh, basically allow you to develop your full proposal by the deadline that I have mentioned earlier in my presentations. Then your full pro proposal will be assessed by evaluators on the basis of the uh, uh, paperwork that you have submitted. And if you have selected to go to the next stage, then you will pitch your idea in front of uh, jury members that are drawn from the world of investment and entrepreneurship. And those jury members are coming from all over Europe. And uh, they have a lot of experience in doing that now over a number of years with us. And uh, they will decide whether you get the funding or and what type of funding. So they may adjust the level and the categories of funding that you may have applied for in order to fit it uh, better to uh, the result of that evaluation. In case you have applied for uh, an investment component and the investment component has been accepted, then you will enter also a due diligence process uh, that will involve a number of checks, of course, uh, and that uh, may require a bit more time before we get to uh, the conclusion of it. But for the grant component, after selection, things are going to move very, very quickly. Uh, once the paperwork is done and the grant agreement is being signed, you will be able to access very quickly the money in the form of a first pre-financing, pre which is set at 50%, 50% of the money that you ask. If we look now at the equity, uh, so I've covered this uh, already to a certain extent, we will uh, ask you, of course, because that's very much the DNA of what we, of what we do to uh, have, uh, to find, we will bring you in contact with other potential investors in order to increase the capacity of, uh, of you to attract investors because, of course, we provide equity, but at the same time, the sto your story, the development of your company will depend very much on your capacity to attract private investors later on. And uh, we are doing this through uh, a number of matchmaking platforms, uh, a number of tools that will help uh, you to attract those investors more efficiently. Uh, and but I covered all the other points that you see there. And the entity that does that for us is called the EIC Fund. Uh, it was established in 2020 and has now about 140 companies in which we are in the process of investing and uh, we have already been disbursed uh, around uh, for close to 300 million uh, euros uh, in of money. So on the investment process, uh, as I said, there is first uh, an initial assessment that will 
look at your different stage of development, then a due diligence will be run, and then uh, there will be an investment pro uh, proposal being drafted and a decision, and on that basis we will ask you to sign it, and then we will negotiate the uh, investment agreement with you, and then we'll move it to the disbursement. This time frame you can expect to happen between a time of six to nine months after the moment when you have actually applied. Um, the EIC fund is uh, successful, 140 uh, companies already in the portfolio. As a consequence, uh, we will um, continue to expand it, uh, but we need to have more means of its development and we will rely no more on uh, the European Investment Bank to deliver this, uh, the uh, investment component of uh, the EIC accelerator and will be helped by the appointment of an external fund manager that will help us manage this growing uh, capacity that we need for the uh, growing uh, fund that uh, uh, help us imp implement the IC accelerator. Okay, here you have a summary of what we are looking for in the due diligence. I will not go through this into the different details. And uh, of course, the comp we will spend quite a lot of time in determining exactly at which type of investment scenario you fall into in order to target the support measures that uh, we need to deploy for uh, your company in a more tailor-made way. And uh, this gives you an idea of what uh, we are looking for. The, the typical, uh, uh, I would say, scenario is that if the company is not ready yet to attract private investors and move to a financing round, we typically uh, give half of the money in the form of a convertible for you to give you more runway to run your operations and then we work with you towards the next round to attract private investors. This feature of convertible plus helping to reach the next uh, round of financing is essential in particular for early stage deep tech company to reach the moment when they can attract private investors in a good, uh, I would say, in a good way and be able to uh, then start the process of growing the company. So here you have uh, a view on what type of matchmaking networks, uh, matchmaking efforts we are making in order to bring you in contact with these private investors. This includes, for example, exposing you through e pitching events with large corporates in order to provide you support, potential support from uh, these corporates that will maybe buy your uh, products, but also may be interested if they have a VC arm, for example, in investing in your company in case that innovation is particularly interesting from their point of view as well. So we have right now a co-investor portal with more than 800 investors registered that uh, are looking at the opportunities that uh, the company selected under the EIC represent for them. Uh, like I said, we have 140 companies in our portfolio right now and they are constantly looking at those opportunities, exchanging with uh, the, the investors and finding new opportunities. So it's a very active uh, process by which we are uh, uh, trying to improve considerably the possibilities offered by uh, the companies that we are financing. If you want to know how to apply, you have the information that is there. Uh, like I said, you can either uh, type it up, but the best way, of course, to type it up is to just say, say EIC call, EIC accelerator call, and uh, if you Google that, you will be directed to those uh, help uh, on, uh, on, the, on the platform, and uh, you will be able to have all the information that I have given you and that will take you uh, through the menu one by one. Now, very quickly on the Latvia and the performance of Latvia, uh, you can see here how many applications we uh, have uh, gotten. I mean, I'm not going to get into the details here, but uh, a few companies have been already successful in getting access to the grant support and also the grant uh, of equity. So uh, it is possible to do it under uh, Horizon 2020, which was the predecessor program. And uh, we believe that uh, there will be even more opportunity to do so under uh, now the current program that we are uh, running. Voila. So that's what I wanted to tell you. You have uh, this more information here. I think this uh, presentation can be made available on request if you uh, want to be able to look at it more uh, uh, precisely. And I think I have, e have exhausted my time.
So thank you very much for listening to me. And I wish you good luck if you want to apply later on. Thank you. <laughs>